Hello, I'm George Cairns, and in this video lesson, I'm going to show you different ways to organize your photographs using Digital Photo Professional 4, Canon's free image editing and organizing software. Now, usually when you import photographs from your Canon, they tend to go into folders organized by the date in which they were shot. So you've got some different dates here, and you can see we've got a variety of different shoots from this group of shots in London to this folder here of photographs in St. Albans. Now at the moment they're displayed by file name, so you've got 820, 848, 855, so we're going from older files to newer files all the way down to here, but you could actually change the way that's sorted by popping down to the sort and filter menu which is at the bottom here, and then we can say we want to sort by descending order, so now we've got the older stuff at the bottom and the newer stuff should be at the top, but just to make sure we can sort by shooting date and time. So now we've got older stuff here and then newer stuff at the top. I like to have the newer stuff at the top because I like to start at the present and then go back in time down through my archive, but you might want to work in a different way and you can using this sort menu. There's lots of other things as well that you can sort. You can look for particular file types. If you just wanted to see movies, you could untick these files here and then use a filter. Let's turn filter on and it would only show you movie files. There aren't any in this particular example, so I'll turn the filter off for the moment and turn back on my raw extensions. In fact, I don't need to see movies, JPEGs or TIFFs. We're just going to work with CR2 raw files. We'll come back to filters in just a tick. I want to show you another way of sorting, first of all, by going to sort by things such as metadata in your files, such as ISO speed. So we click here to sort by ISO speed. We get the fastest ISO at the top here because we're in descending order. So we should have a nice large ISO number. We can click on an image and pop down to look at metadata and you can see we've got an ISO of 2000. And as it's descending, this one here should have an ISO value of the same or less. Clicking here, 1600 ISO, and then we go down again to 1600, and then when we get out, it should be something like 160, so not so sensitive because we're outside. So if you want to find really noisy photographs, you can sort by ISO speed, and then that means you can click on an image and then check it for noise, and you might want to smooth out some of the color noise. So being able to search a photograph by its metadata is really useful because you can find a host of different types of photographs very easily. You might want photographs with a really wide aperture value so you can see a nice soft background bouquet, for example, and you can search using that criteria. But I'm going to go back to the conventional shooting date and time for the moment, and let's close the filter menu. We'll come back to that later, and I'll show you different ways to check and organize your photographs. So by default, we're looking at thumbnails, and it's quite hard to really see the quality of the image from a thumbnail. And you can also increase the size of the thumbs as well to get a better look, but that's still not telling you really if the photograph is nice and sharp or if there's any chromatic aberration, for example. So what we need to do is click to select a photograph and then go to Quick Check. We can see the actual pixels of the picture by clicking on times one, and then we can click to drag around the shot like this, or use the navigator for a quicker jump to different areas. And here you might see things such as chromatic aberration clinging to the edge of contrasting shapes, or in this case, it's slightly soft, so we need to sharpen that up. You can go back to full size again and see the entire image, and you can also have a look at the autofocus points used to capture a particular shot. Let's turn those off for the moment. You've also got metadata here as well, a handy histogram telling you the spread of tones. This shot looks a little bit underexposed from the histogram. And then we can start to quality control the image by doing things such as rating it. I could give this a two star rating, for example, and you may want to add a check mark as well. A check mark of five might mean something that needs to be sharpened up, for example. You can use your own criteria to decide what these marks mean and you can clear them or keep them according to your needs. Let's just have a look at another photograph by coming out of Quick Check. Then let me just scroll down to another shot, such as this one here. Quick Check that. Here we go. And again, we can add a rating. I can check the focal points here as well by turning them on. It should be focusing on the flower. So if we go to times one and zoom in, then the flower should be sharper and the background should be nice and soft as we can see here. We still need to sharpen that up a little bit more to bring out some more detail, but that helps us to work out that if we want a nice sharp church photograph, this is not gonna be that photo because we're focusing on the foreground flower. Click to turn that off, back to full size again. And there we have another image which has been rated. We could do a check mark as well if we like. I'm just go for something at random like three. I'm gonna show you how to filter using check marks and stars in just a tick. Back to the main photographs again. I'm just going to scale these thumbnails down so we can see more photographs 
and then we can click on a shot and then we can also rate it using keyboard shortcuts by tapping a three for example tap a two for two tap a one and we'll go for a five on this one just for a bit of variety so there's quicker ways to rate your photographs by just using the keyboard shortcuts instead of going into quick check so it's worth rating your favorite photographs or ones you want to reject as well and you can also reject them in the quick check window we can pop down now to sort and filter and we can sort now by ratings for example let's go to rating here and let's go to descending so the highest ones are at the top and then we drop down to lower ratings like so you can swap that around by clicking on ascending if you want so that's a great way to get your best photographs appearing at the top of a huge stack of photographs you can also filter by check marks as well if you go to check mark it will have the highest ones at the top there's a five a three and then some ones but you can also filter by hiding particular things if we just clear all for the moment and turn filter on then nothing is showing up but if we just want to see check marks two um, or three depending if there are any twos there weren't any so the three showing up there now we might want to see check marks with one as well so there's a couple here so that's another way of just finding particular photographs against a sea of other photographs very easily by filtering with a check mark and you can apply this criteria to all folders by clicking here I'm going to turn the filtering off though so I can see everything and we'll just sort back to shooting date and time again and as well as filtering by check mark you can also filter by rating you might want to see only three star photographs so we turn filtering on it's just going to show you those particular photographs and you can have an exact rating or you can try and choose at least three stars or no more than three stars but i'm going to turn filtering off for the moment and show you one last way to organize your photographs using the collection panel here so i'm going to click on add collection and i'm going to call this one birds and to add them all you need to do is tick the thumbnail and just drag it down to the collection like so let's take this one as well pop that down and you can see we now have two photographs in our birds collection and to view those we can just click here and it's going to ask us if you want to save the edited images that's basically the check marks and the ratings we've added so just say yes to all and it's just going to save those and now we're looking at our birds collection and the nice thing about collections is that when you go to another folder of photographs such as this one here oh, there's some more birds you can see the collection is still visible even though you're in a different folder so the birds will always be accessible here and any other collections that you create by using the add collection option so you can have as many as you like and you can access them much more easily than raking through individual folders trying to find those bird photos